Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the first class on music appreciation. Glad you could make it. So, were you all able to get your notebooks and your supplies? Mm-hmm. Yes, the bookstore is open until 9 p.m. Uh, so after class, if you haven't got your supplies yet, uh, they have plenty. Over there, you can go and pick them up. Mm -hmm. So the first class, I wanted to go over some of the basics of music notation. Uh, I know some of you may be familiar with it, but some of you may be uh, completely new for you. I will just draw here. I don't have a whiteboard up yet, but um, I will draw on the paper and uh, I can share photocopies or you can make your own notations along with me if you like. Mm-hmm. So you've probably all seen notation with the lines and the notes and all of that and wondered, what does that all mean? So the start off, uh, you can actually buy paper that has the staffs drawn on it. But basically a staff is a series of four uh, lines. Five lines, I'm sorry, five lines. So, for instance, we'll start, we'll make these rather large, so you can see. Oh, I'm just going to do the five lines following the lines on the paper, which is a lot easier. extra long. This eraser doesn't work very well. All right. So at the beginning will be the sign which tells uh, there's a treble clef or a bass clef which tells you the names and pitches of the notes. So the clef sign is written kind of like an S, something like this. Loop, and it loops around a bit. It's not a very good one, but gives you the idea. And then I will do another. Do another one down here. Did it again? What's wrong with me? One, two, three, four, five. Keep counting wrong. All right, and so the base clef, it looks kind of like a comma, I guess. And then it's got two little dots. Like that. Okay. And the very basic notes start, well, the first way, the way that I learned it, and it was kind of the easiest way to learn, is to draw the notes, um, you learn the notes that are in the spaces, so we'll do space, so it's four spaces, 
like that. And this is F A C E. So it's a little mnemonic because they spell face. That's the easiest way to remember that. And then the ones on the lines are A G B D F. Every good boy deserves favor. That's the way I learned it. Every good boy deserves favor. Alright. <clears throat> so that helps you start to learn uh, the notes and their placement on the staff. And are there any questions about that so far? Mm -hmm, yeah. It's a little bit confusing, but we'll review it every class and uh, we'll give you some worksheets and uh, practice sheets to take home with you so we, you'll be able to get more familiar with the notes and the notations with time. So don't worry. Don't worry about it too much. All right, so now, see if I can do this right. One, two, three, four, five. So now we'll start to learn the notes, how they're notated. So we'll draw another staff. tell the musician not only what note to play but what is the speed and the tempo uh, and the duration of the note so there is the uh, whole note and a whole note is written as an empty circle like that excuse me some notes here. Okay. So that's a whole note. And then a half note is almost like a whole note, but it's got a little tail or flag, whatever you want to call it. It's a whole note, half note. Then there's a quarter note, and then again that starts with the oval, but it's filled in. And it also has a little tail. And there is an eighth note, which starts with a quarter note. The, the flag, then you've got a little flag there, and it goes on with um, further, like for instance, you can do a eighth, uh, a sixteenth note, you'll have two flags, a thirty second note will have three flags. And 164th will have four flags. So if you want to find, um, you can probably find examples online of classical musicians' um, scores to, you know, a symphony or something like that, and you'll see extensive use of all the different notes. It's quite fascinating once you start to understand what, uh, what they mean. So, 
We've also got something called rests. So this word a note um, where there's no note, where there's a pause in the music is called a rest. And that's written as a little uh, bar like that. There's a half rest and um, a whole, the whole rest drops down below the line. Half rest. There's also a little bar, but it's above the line. <coughs> and then there's uh, quarter rest, eighth rest, etc. Quarter rest is kind of hard to write. It's sort of Sort of like that. It's kind of hard to write. And then the eighth rest is a little flag with a knobby like that. So that just gives you an idea. You don't have to worry about memorizing these or anything like that right now. So basically, the shape of each note shows its time value. So in one measure, so music notations are written in measures. I'm going to draw another step here. I'm just going to the side of the line. really going outside of the lines now. So at the beginning of the staff, um, you will see a notation like 4-4 four, four time, 2-4 time, and it's written like a, uh, kind of like a fraction, like 4-4, four, 4-4 four, four, four time. So basically that says, um, four beats per measure and a quarter note gets the beat. So for instance, so in one measure, measure is like a unit of time. You need, each measure needs to equal four counts. So to give you an idea, like if you had um, a whole note, there would just be one note that would count one, two, three, four. So you just play one note and that would count for a count of four. If you have a half note, there would be two of them to make one measure. So it would be let's see, half note and a half note. So like this is a um, A and a C. So it'll be this would be one, two, three, four. So each of these is getting a beat a count of two, and there's two of them equaling four. So that you get your four four time. So if you had a quarter note, if you're at all familiar with uh, fractions in arithmetic. You can, let's make these quarter notes. So I'm going to guess that you can tell me how many quarter notes I will need. Mm -hmm. That is right. <laughs> See, it's not too hard. So four. Uh, Four quarter notes. So this would be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So this would be a very regular beat. Each note gets one beat for measure. One, two, three, four. And you can see, um, so that gives you the time and the beat and the rhythm. And then the notes is, um, we've got 
Let's see. We've got A, E, C, and what is this? G. Mm -hmm. I don't know if those are the right notes. I'm not have I don't have perfect pitch. But that gives you the idea up, down, up, down, down. And let's see. If there was a rest, for instance, let's say instead, I don't have my erasers not working, but instead of this third note, if that wasn't there, and let's say there was a rest instead. It would be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so where the th instead of the third note you would just pause dun, dun, dun. so it's still one two three four there's just no note played on where the rest is so one two four so that's kind of a review for the notes the notations and keeping time and how to fill out a measure to always equal what your count is. Mm -hmm. So um, if any of you would like this, uh, I'll run off some copies to take home, but also if you have the workbooks from the store, this is all in there. Uh, as well. So, but if you haven't had a chance to get it yet, I'm happy to make copies for you. So, I'm sure you've also heard of sharps and flats. So, each note, or most notes, have a sharp and a flat. Uh, and those are written with a sharp is a like a hash mark. Kind of like a uh, number sign or a pound sign, I should say, whatever. And the flat a flat is written kind of like a um, B, a small letter B in italics, perhaps. Kind of like that. So a sharp and a flat. And those are written in front of the notes on the uh, staff. So like if this is a D, you know, you could put a sharp or flat symbol before it. So you will learn not all of the notes have sharps and flats, but most of them do. So that's a little more advanced. Uh, we'll get to that probably to about the third week or so. <coughs> so, um, I wanted to read you a little bit of a uh, notation section of the book, just to reinforce a little bit of what we started to introduce. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, So, music is written and printed in a picture language of its own called notation. Notation indicates the pitch of the tones, their place in a sequence of tones, their duration, and the composer's ideas about how they should be played. Notes are written signs that represent tones. The notes appear on a staff. The higher the composer places the note, the higher its pitch. The order in which he places it, from left to right, indicates its place in a sequence of notes. The shape of the note shows its time value. So this is what we just went over, uh, the whole notes, the quarter notes, the eighth notes, and uh, the rest. A clef sign at the end of a staff, at the left end of a staff, determines the position of notes on the staff. The treble clef is often called the G clef. 
because its sign fixes the G above the middle C on the second line from the bottom of the staff. The bass clef, often called the F clef, fixes the F below middle C on the second line from the top of the staff. High notes, such as those for the right end of the piano, or the really high notes, appear in the treble clef. Lower notes appear in the bass clef. Music for the viola is written in the alto clef. Music for the trombone, bassoon, and cello sometimes appear in the tenor clef. <coughs> A key signature appears at the right of the clef sign. By using sharp signs or flat signs, the composer indicates that certain notes should always be played sharp or flat. In this way, he shows the key of his work. Key signatures take from one to seven sharp or flat signs. The composer may place an accidental in front of a certain note. Accidentals are the signs for sharp, flat, or natural to show a change from the key signature. Any note not marked sharp or flat is called natural. The natural sign cancels a sharp or flat. A time signature appears at the right of the key signature. It is shown as a fraction, such as 4, 4, 3, 4, 6, 8, or 2, 2. We went over that. Remember the 1, 2, that's the time signature. The de denominator shows what kind of note is the unit of measurement and gets one beat. The numerator shows how many beats there are to a measure. In a song marked 4-4, four, four, the composer shows that four quarter notes should receive one beat each. One measure of 4-4 four, four may have a whole note worth four beats, or two half no notes worth two beats each, or eight eighths note, <laughs> eight eighth notes worth a half beat each, or two quarter notes and a half note, or some other combination totaling four beats. Duration or time values. The shape of a note indicates its duration, just as its position on the staff shows its pitch. Whole notes have open oval shapes. Half notes look like whole notes, but have stems. Quarter notes have solid oval shapes with stems. Eighteenth, sixteenth, etc. have one, two, three, or four flags on their stems. So as you can see, the uh, book for the course, it goes into a lot of detail. And so what we go over in class will be enforcing what is in the book and uh, vice versa. The book will be enforcing what we go over in class. So I'll try to introduce you to the topics that are most uh, important for each week. And then when you get home or to the student union or wherever you're going to do your work. You can review in the workbook what we've gone over in class and then do the worksheets which help reinforce what you learned about. Alright, so I think that's most of what I wanted to cover today. There are also some diagrams, as you can see in the book, using the piano to show the notes. It's a good basic uh, way to start is using the piano. And we do have piano practice rooms on campus. And since you are taking a class in the music department, you may sign in at the uh, department office and you can room, book a room for one hour at a time and uh, practice on the piano. There are soundproof rooms and 
there's no charge at all. There are some music books in there, and uh, you can take your workbook in and practice with some of the notes and some basic uh, melodies once we get a little bit started, a little bit farther. Yes. So, I think for next, the next class, I'd like you to review what we talked about tonight. We'll review chapters one and two in your workbook. And then there are exercises at the end. I think they have five exercises per chapter, but I think for chapter one, just do exercises two and three. And then for chapter two, do exercises one and one, two, and four. Okay. So I will write this on here too. Uh, so you'll have that. But if you want to take a copy of this, you'll have that exercises on there. I don't, you can do the other exercises, uh, but I've just selected the ones that are most pertinent to what we're covering. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to overwhelm you either. So I don't, and we have got other classes. And a lot, for a lot of you, this is probably an elective that you may just be taking to get your humanities units or your, you know, general ed credit. So, um, I don't like to give too much homework. So each worksheet is really should, shouldn't take more than 10 minutes or so, sometimes even less. <coughs> so are there any other, um, questions or about the class or about the campus? Mm -hmm. Yes, the student union is open from 7 a.m. to midnight, actually. And there's a cafe um, on the second floor for coffees, teas, uh, some pastries, muffins, things like that. And on the first floor is a um, more of a lunch cafeteria, which if you want to actually get a full meal, uh, it's cafeteria style. But the uh, second floor is more of kind of like a, just a cafe for hanging out and there's some more comfortable chairs. There aren't really tables. It's more like a lounge, I guess. The tables and trays and things are more on the first floor. So if you kind of want a place just to hang out, maybe have a snack and read, and um, I recommend the cafe on the second floor. There is a third floor also to the student union. There are some private study rooms. There are tutoring rooms which you can reserve at the office. Yeah, um, or group study rooms also, like if some of you in the class want to study together, uh, the rooms that in the groups study room seat between four and eight, depending on which room it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Parking permits. Well, there are still several available. Um, we have a lot of parking on campus, and then there's a remote lot, too, uh, which is a little farther, but just allow an extra 10 minutes or so to walk. But if you, if you would like to get an on-campus permit, you can do that at the main administrative office. Um, it is, I believe, it's about $20 for a semester, so it's not too too terrible. Also, we have the uh, public transportation. There's a bus stop right at the main entrance to the campus. So 
Um, you can get a student pass for something like, I think it's $12, $13 a month for unlimited rides on the bus. So that's a pretty good deal. All right. Well, thank you very much for your attention today. And I'll see you next week. And um, oh, on the class uh, directory online, it's got my office hours and my contact info. So if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or stop by my office hours as well. Okay, see you next week.